Men's difficulty finding a partner is a subject you will find no shortage of content on, with many a content producer, whether on YouTube or elsewhere, attempting to sell a solution. Today as well, many men have adapted to current mated dynamics by opting out, this being whether they wanted to or not, and for a number of reasons, including the threat of false allegations, the law system, but also upon considering how narcissistic and psychopathic the world has truly become. In considering the seeming growth of men who have elected to go their own way, a subject which even pops up in academic literature, which I've covered, amongst other modes of existence men have adopted which pull them away from the marketplace and more in touch with themselves and their sole interests, I found it worth asking how single we really are today. In attempts at answering this question, we'll be going over a study titled Mating Performance and Singlehood Across 14 Nations, which in line with the title, investigated singlehood, many performance, and their association across 14 countries, including Australia, Brazil, China, Greece, Hungary, Italy, Japan, Peru, Poland, Russia, Spain, Turkey, the UK, and Ukraine. You really don't have to look very far for proposed reasons to pursue a relationship, whether it be a family member or an online salesperson. But the authors also state reasons why individuals elect to remain single, such as developing themselves. As they directly state, it has been further argued that single life could be better than mated life, as the former is associated with more positive outcomes than the latter. For example, singles have more time to develop themselves, allocate more time to do physical exercise, and can potentially be healthier, have more friends, and spend more time with their relatives. The possible benefits of singlehood may make it more desirable for some people who may prefer to stay single. Across the 14 countries, data from 7,181 participants were accumulated, and they found that when it came to mating performance, while China had the highest, Japan, my current home, had the lowest. In the case of Japan, this wasn't much of a surprise. As I'm sure you're all wondering, when it came to comparing the sexes regarding mating performance, their scores were about the same. Starting a relationship was the hardest part for about half of the participants, followed by difficulty maintaining a relationship, coming in at 38%, and a third found difficulty with relationships in general. And when it came to age, older participants did better with mating performance. Now, although it is not necessarily known why, between being between relationships, involuntarily single, and voluntarily single, the latter was the most common. It will be interesting to see survey results similar to what was conducted here in Japan regarding herbivore men, where indirect test results provided a reason why they remained single. If you recall from the video, a 2009 survey found that 60.5% of the sample considered themselves to be herbivore men, 62.8% considered themselves to not be assertive when it came to relationships, and most interestingly, 46.7% stated that it is foolish to spend a lot of money to get close to someone of the opposite sex. Although the U.S. was not part of this study, perhaps places such as this, as well as the U.K., contribute to the higher percentage of voluntary singlehood due to factors such as the law system. Potentially as well, as the authors acknowledge, this could come down to participants preferring to say their situation is voluntary, but they are actually involuntarily single. Ultimately, people are staying single nowadays, and there are many legitimate reasons to do so, ranging anywhere from neurodiversity to simply observing the world around you. And as much as people insist that you pursue some form of relationship, that kind of life is just not for everyone, and even less so today.